Okay, people also had trouble with GP 1.3 projectiles number three. This was the one where the object was thrown um, a distance of two meters, and it was a 6.8 meter per second, and it was an unknown angle. And an unknown angle is kind of hard to solve for. But the same equations and system applies. You know x, that's 2.0. You don't know vix, but you know it's 6.8 si cosine of an unknown angle. Um, you know the horizontal acceleration is zero, and you don't know the time. In the vertical direction, the vertical displacement is zero because it's one of those problems that just goes up and down. The vertical initial velocity is 6.8 sine x, or sine unknown. The vertical acceleration is known, and you don't know the time. This is another equation where it's a really good idea to solve it using variables. So in the horizontal direction, we have delta x equals v cosine theta t plus zero. Okay, and I'm going to solve that for t because I'm going to want to use that to sub in. So delta x over v cosine theta equals t. In the vertical direction, this is going to be zero, um, and that's going to be v sine theta t plus g over 2 t squared. And because the delta y is zero, I can rearrange that v sine theta t equals negative g over 2 t squared. And because I know that one of the roots of t is not zero, I can divide both sides by t and get v sine theta t. Actually, one of the roots of t is zero in this problem, but we're not going to worry about that. Equals minus g t over 2. So here are my two equations from the other page, and I'm going to take t and sub it into this equation. So I'm going to get v sine theta is equal to negative g delta x over v cosine theta 2. And then I'm going to rearrange this and make it 2 v squared sine theta cosine theta equals minus g delta x. And I even can take the negative g to the other side. And so here I have um, everything I need, except I have a sine of an angle times a cosine of an angle. Now, I can't really solve for angle in this, but there is a very useful trig identity, which is the 2 sine angle cosine angle equals sine 2 theta. Given that, this converts to v, negative v squared, sine 2 theta over g equals delta x. And this is known, actually, as the range equation, and you can memorize it, but it only works for this situation. Now that I have my range equation, I want to solve this for theta. So then I get sine 2 theta is equal to delta x g over negative v squared. And this negative basically means that this thing in the box is going to be a positive number. So putting in my numbers, I get 2 times 9.8 divided by 6.8 quantity squared. This equals 0.424. And remember, that's sine 2 theta equals 0.424. So 2 theta is going to equal the arc sine of 0.424. And I get 2 theta equaling 25 degrees. So if 2 theta equals 25 degrees, then theta equals 25 over 2, and thus it's about 13 degrees, or 12.5 degrees. And this is, seems to be the answer, except then they say there are two possible answers. There are two possible trajectories. And that should make sense to people, because if I look at a distance 2 meters away, I could go up and then down. Or I could go up and then down. I could take my initial velocity and make more of it go up, gaining time, but losing, um, losing horizontal velocity. Or I could be more horizontal, and I would have more horizontal velocity, but obviously I would fall to the ground fairly soon. One of the tricks to figuring this out is to look back at the original version of the range equation that we derived, which was that you have sine theta times cosine theta in your equation. And uh, there's a rule in trig that, well, like if you've got 30 degrees, right? Sine of 30 degrees is going to equal cosine of 60 degrees. So every angle is going to switch with its complement in this equation. So the complement of 12.5 degrees is going to work just as well. 
because if I do the sine of, I'll just do 13, 13 degrees times the cosine of 13 degrees, that's going to be the same as the sine of 77 degrees times the cosine of 77 degrees. Because these two are the same, and these two are the same. And you wouldn't have necessarily have known before this problem that there are two possible directions to aim to get to the same place. Um, an interesting extension to this problem is, what angle can you send something at to get it the farthest? There's kind of a sweet spot where you aim it at a particular angle and it goes the farthest for your possible velocity. So you can figure out what the maximum angle or the maximum you can get out of range for this equation, if you'd like.